So in a previous video, I solved this differential equation by using um, the method of separation of variables. We put the y equation, y variables on one side, put the x variables on the other, and then we integrated both sides. Uh, in this case, though, I want to solve it by a different method because this particular equation can be solved by um, the Bernoulli method as well. So I want to show you how we can do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to distribute the uh, terms on the right side of the equation so that we get y squared and 2y. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this y term to the other side of the equation. So x dy dx minus 2y is equal to y squared. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to put this in standard form. So just to make this a little easier to look at, I'm going to change dy dx into y prime, and I'm going to divide out the x through the whole equation. So that will give us y prime is equal or minus uh, 2 over x y is equal to 1 over x y squared. Okay, and so now this is in the form of a Bernoulli equation. We have the left side of the equation looks basically first order linear. We have y prime, and we have a function of y with some possibly multiple of x in front. And then on the other side of the equation, if it wasn't for this um, power of y here, this would be a totally normal linear equation. But instead, we have y to some power. And so that is the technique that we can use Bernoulli to solve for. Now, there are different ways to approach a Bernoulli equation, uh, but the way that I like to go about it is to, we're going to multiply the entire equation by 1 minus n y to the negative n. Now, in some cases, you may see people dividing by um, this term right here, y squared in this case, where n is 2. Um, you may see them calling this dividing it out, uh, where here I'm saying multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, this constant term is something that uh, in some methods you will deal with later on, and I'm just putting it here so that we have one multiplying step instead of a second one later on to doctor the equation. So it works out if we do this this way. Now, n is can be anything except 0 or 1. If it's 0, then this term doesn't exist. It, this is just an x-only term, and it's linear. And if, it's, if this term here is a 1, then you can combine it with this term, and then again, the equation is linear. So anything other than 0 or 1. Uh, but here, this y to the n term is n equals 2. So 1 minus 2, y to the negative 2 is negative y to the negative 2. So we're going to multiply the whole equation by that. So we get negative y to the negative 2, y prime. Um, and then the negative times the negative gives me a positive 2 over x. And multiplying y by y to the negative 2 gives me y to the negative 1. And then on the other side of the equation, the y to the 2 and the y to the negative 2 cancel out, and I just get negative 1 over x. Now, the Bernoulli method is a substitution method, and so what we need to do now is we need to make our substitution. The term where the y used to be is now going to be what we substitute for. So our new variable is going to be z, and it's going to replace y to the negative 1, whatever this term is right here. Again, not the x, just the y component. Now. I need my equation to have z prime in it. I need to replace this term right here. So z prime, we're going to do by getting, uh, just doing implicit differentiation on our substitution variable. So y to the negative 1, we bring down the power. Uh, y becomes y to the negative 2. And then implicit differentiation, we multiply by the chain rule, and we get y prime. So this is our z prime substitution. 
Now, what multiplying by y um, by this 1 minus n up here did for me is that it made this term look exactly like the z prime. If I didn't multiply by this constant up here, this 1 minus n constant, then I would have to do some algebra to make it into z prime. Uh, but we did it uh, before, and so now we just directly substitute. This whole term becomes z prime, and then the second term becomes the x portion times z, and then the other side of the equation doesn't change at all. But now we can see that this equation is linear in the new variable. It's linear in z. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to find our integrating factor. So mu is e to the integral. Whatever this term is in front of our linear term, our original function, so 2 over x dx. And so that's going to become the antiderivative of 2 over x is going to be 2 ln oops e to the let's do that 2 ln x and we bring the 2 inside ln x squared and then the ln and the e can cancel and we're just left with x squared as our multiplying factor. So now we're going to multiply our equation here, everything by x squared. So we get x squared, z prime. And then 2 over x times x squared is going to give us 2x times z. And then on this side of the equation, 1 over x times x squared is going to give us x, and so this becomes negative x. And we just continue on with our linear solution process. This side of the equation is now a product rule. So this is x squared z prime, because the derivative of x squared is 2x times z unchanged. And then the derivative of z is z prime and times the x squared unchanged. So this is a standard product rule. And then we integrate both sides. And on the left side, the prime and the derivative will go ahead and just cancel. And then on this side of the equation, we'll actually do the integration. So x squared z becomes, well, what's the antiderivative of negative x? Well, it's negative 1 half x squared plus a constant. And then we divide everything by x squared to get z by itself, z. Um, so we get negative 1 half. The x squareds cancel. And then we get c over x squared. Now, we're not done solving the equation because our original equation was in terms of y and x and not z and x. So we're going to go back to our substitution that we made right here. And we're going to replace z with y to the negative 1. Now, we're going to want to take a reciprocal of this in order to solve for y. So I'm going to write this expression in terms of a single term that's easy to flip. So we need a common denominator of 2x squared. So if I multiply this c by 2, so I get 2c, because I'm multiplying here. And then I multiply here 
by x squared, I'm going to get negative x squared all over 2x squared, my common denominator. And just make sure my signs are right. That was negative. That, okay, good. So then um, 2c, we'll just call it a different variable. We'll just call it d. It's an unknown constant. So that means that y is equal to, you know, we flip this side of the equation, 2x squared divided by d minus x squared. Now this answer is algebraically equivalent to the answer we had in our previous video. The only thing that we might have to adjust is the value of the constants. So we might have had in the last video 2ex squared, for instance, and ex squared in the denominator. If I multiply everything by e in the top and the bottom, um, then all I've done is I've adjusted my constants. Um, another way of doing that would be to divide everything by d, uh, 1 over d by 1 over d. All of these are unknown um, constants, and so what we call them exactly doesn't particularly matter. Um, but just to finish the thought, um, let's say I did 2 over d, multiplied everything by d, by, by 1 over d, uh, 2 over d x squared um, divided by 1 minus 1 over d x squared. And then I simply replace 1 over d with e, and so I would get 2 e x squared all over 1 minus e x squared, which I believe is the answer that we had in the previous solution. Uh, and again, I normally I don't, for my own students, I don't necessarily care that you go this far with the algebra. I do want you to get it back in terms of y, but simplifying it to make it um, an explicit function instead of an implicit function is not always the most important thing.